Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. God is great. His word is true. And it works in my life. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Then let's pray and get into his word. Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise you. We honor you. We give you all the glory. We are excited to be in here proclaiming that you are beautiful, that you are magnificent, that you are the lover of our souls, that you died for us, that you rose again, that we might have life, eternal life with you. And this morning, as we study this topic of koinonia, this topic of Christian community, will you cause it to resonate with our hearts? Would you cause it to challenge us to take our lives in our relationship with you and with others to the next level, Lord God? Would you just do a stirring in this place to send us out on mission in Jesus' name? And everyone says, amen. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I shared the Westminster Catechism, which says man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's your goal. That's my goal is to bring glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and to enjoy him forever. You see, there's a lot of things you can live your life for, but there's only one thing with eternal purposes and eternal consequences that is living for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to glorify him. And the way that we do that individually is we reflect his image well. When we live a life as a believer, when we live out the word in our everyday life, that reflects God's image well. And one of the things we know from our previous discussions, if you were here, if you were not, feel free to go out there in the lobby and pick up one of the CDs absolutely free. One of the things you'll know is that God is a triune God. He was created in community. And in Genesis, when you read the, uh, the topic of creation, there's only one thing that he said was not good. Does anybody remember what that was? It is not good for man to be alone, right? So in that, he's saying by contrast that it is good when man is in fellowship with one another and with God, in koinonia with one another, this this essence of Christian community that transcends normal community that we're talking about. So corporately as a church, it is important that we too glorify God in our Christian communities, within our church. That's the chief end of the corporate body of Christ in addition to the individual life. Lives that we lead. So the church should glorify God and enjoy Him. You see, in life, other motives do get in the way. There's probably some other things in your life that you're living for that might not line up with that statement, some things that you're putting before your relationship with God. And if that's true, you need to get rid of them. See, if you're seeking a relationship with God so that you could prosper, if you're seeking a relationship with God so that you could add any other thing to it, then guess what? That is called an idol in your life, and that needs to go. The chief end is simply to enjoy him, to cry out like we did this morning in song and say, you are beautiful, O God, and to be satisfied with that. It's not an easy thing to do by any means, right? There's all these competing interests in our hearts and in our minds, but over the course of this study and over the course of this year, we've really challenged each other to step up in that area and put that kind of verse into practice in our life. In a previous message, we also shared that community is not optional for the Christian. And community is something that is very special when we talk about this concept of koinonia. It's something that transcends just being a part of a club. It transcends being part of just a fellowship of other people that don't have the commonality of Christ in mind. Because in all other circles, people seem to be competing for position all the time. Have you ever sensed that? You could be in a work setting, and all of a sudden, I I was in a meeting the other day. They had some tech people that were in the meeting, and they were competing to prove that they were the best tech person that was in there. And I was just looking at the meeting. I'm just here to serve. I'm just here to help. All these people are trying to prove something in those relationships. You see, it happens in the house of God sometimes, and it should not be so. You know, we should be there to love one another and care for one another and be there for one another and help glorify God in all of our individual relationships, right? to glorify him and to make him known. You see, the church plays a pivotal role in the life of every Christian and in the advancement of the kingdom of God. Sinclair Ferguson writes, 
The church lies at the very center of the eternal purpose of God. It is not a divine afterthought. It is not an accident of history. On the contrary, the church is God's new community for his purpose conceived in eternity past, being worked out in history, and to be perfected in a future eternity. It's not just to save isolated individuals and so perpetuate our loneliness, but rather to build his church, that is to call out the world a people for his own glory. You see, community is not optional. Community is essential to God's plan for making the kingdom of God known and advancing it in our own communities outside of the walls of the church. The church, he wants the church to be beautiful. He wants the church to be an accurate reflection of who he is, but all too often in our churches, we don't get this concept, and we don't live out these things to the way that God would have us. That's why we're studying this concept of Christian community that we might apply it in our very own lives. You see, at Journey, I think we're doing a pretty good job of loving God, but I think we only do an okay job at loving others as expressed, say, in our small groups. If we believe that small groups are the real place where life change happens, then we can't accept a level of maybe 50% of the people in the church participating in them, right? Because if that's where real life change happens, then we need to encourage everybody to participate in those small communities because that's where iron sharpens iron and people care for one another and love one another and are there for one another, right? So we need to continually raise the bar. We don't need to compare ourselves amongst ourselves and look at other churches and say, well, they don't have any small groups or Bible studies, so we don't need to have any. We need to raise the bar and do all that we can to represent biblical community well. Do you think that's the standard that we should be going after? Does that make sense to you today? So this is why we're challenging this topic. This is why we keep bringing it up and reiterating it. You know, many people would say that the church is on life support today. And it's not hard for them to think that at times because as you look at the culture around us, it seems that we're conforming more to culture than we are transforming the culture around us today. Doesn't it seem that way? You look at the world and it seems like it's overtaking the church and it says that we should be advancing, we should be overtaking, we should be the ones that are setting the bar and setting the standard for our community. But it doesn't seem to be happening like that. Maybe God is allowing this to happen. I don't understand the complete part of it, but I know that it says that until he returns, until he cracks the eastern sky, those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ are supposed to be about advancing the kingdom of God. So that's what we're going to do here at Journey, right? We're going to do all that we can to advance the kingdom of God and take it to the next level. Ephesians 4.12 describes my job description. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. Breaking that down, my job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So when I get to heaven, if God's assigned me this role, he's assigned me this position as pastor, I would get in trouble, I would get on my scorecard, right? A bad grade if I did not do a good job of challenging you to get out of your comfort zone and step into using your heart, skills, and abilities to advance the kingdom of God. Would you agree? Do you want me to fail? No, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I like you guys already. We're, we're, we're doing good. So my job is to challenge you. And sometimes challenges are not all that comfortable because if you're complacent, if you're, if you're stuck in a place where you don't really want to be challenged, where you just kind of want to go home and veg, you ever felt that way? I felt that way yesterday. Hallelujah. And I just wanted to go home and veg. But we're not afforded that inside of Christian community. We don't have an opportunity to rest for too long. There's times where we're wounded. There's times where we're hurting. There's times where we need to be sitting on the sidelines. No doubt. I respect that. I honor that. Some of you are here and you've been hurt badly, maybe by a relationship, maybe by another church, God forbid, and you're here and you've been sitting on the sidelines and maybe you've been getting healed up. But our job is to heal you up and coach you up and build you up and equip you that you could use the gifts that God's put on your heart to advance his kingdom. You're not allowed to sit on the sidelines forever. And if I don't challenge you to get off the sidelines and get into the game, then I myself get in trouble. So why do I need to do this? It says that I do it to build up the body of Christ. 
What's the chief end of the body of Christ? It's to glorify God. We talked about that earlier, right? To know him, to make him known, to advance the kingdom of God, to live lives on mission. So my challenge is to get you out of the seats and into service. Can I get an amen? And it might be uncomfortable, and we do a pretty good job of it here. There's a lot of people who serve, so you're not alone. There's a lot of people who lead small group facilitating community here at Journey Church. You are not alone, but I can't have you sitting too long. It's a job that's too big for any one person. It's a job that's going to take everybody if we're to win this city for Christ. And believe me, my heart's desire is to win this city for Christ. We'll not do it alone. It's not going to be Journey Church alone. It's going to take a lot of churches to do it. But it's going to take a lot of people who are the body of Christ to go out there and make a difference. So one of the other purposes is to grow in Christ and mature in our faith as disciples. This whole scenario is lived out through community, and every Christian has a role to play as a participant and ultimately as a facilitator of community. So my job today and in the weeks ahead is to challenge like a hundred or so of you or however many people are in this room right now to step out of your comfort zones and just take some things to the next level. You might think that you're already there, but I'm here to tell you that, man, these are desperate times that we live in. And I think there's comfort zones that all of us find ourselves in. But there's a lost and hurting generation that's outside of the walls of this church that needs to know Jesus. You know, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. You are in the army of God. God doesn't, when you're in the army and you're in wartime, guess what? You better step up and fight or you're going to get killed. And here in America, we don't think that we're in a war anymore. 